So today we are going to discuss about KSP and how exactly KSP works. We'll understand that. That's what is given. Any particular point on a KSP contributes the whole image, and any image in a pixel, any image. This is a if this is an image. This is this is the KSP. This is an image. Now any to take one point in the case space it contributes to the entire image the same way in one point in an image is a product of all these case spaces so any image pixel is derived from the entire case now how to understand this we we see how the image is formed we know that when we keep a human body within a mri machine they will have a particular the hydrogen protons the hydrogen protons within the human body will have particular frequency now this is nothing but a precision now this is a precision is the is the, the rotation of the hydrogen uh, ions protons in its own axis when we keep it in a magnetic field this is a property of any any nucleus Uh, where there is hydrogen atom or any other nucleus there will be particular precision that is happening and this is fixed throughout if the magnetic field is fixed if the magnetic field is uniform throughout we will have a uniform frequency throughout the body now if to measure this what we do is to measure this frequency that is produced this magnetic field that is produced by the human body what we do we give an rf pulse we give an rf pulse once we give the rf pulse what it will do it will flip the magnetic field uh, 90 degrees so that we can measure it why all this happens is what i have explained in the previous uh, classes now once we give an rf pulse we can see that the magnetic field of the the magnetic field of the hydrogen ions have flipped now once the rf pulse is removed the magnetic uh, field will go back in the direction of the magnetic field of the the mri machine so that's when we cannot measure it so whenever the magnetic field is in in, in perpendicular or it is facing the rf uh, rf transmitter that's when we can measure it so this is how we measure but what exactly happens whatever the information that that we measure in this rf transmitter is coming from the entire body now we get a signal now this signal is what a net magnetic field we are getting a net magnetic field so what exactly we are getting but now this amplitude will not give us any image to make a image out of this amplitude that we are getting we do some changes so first thing is from the entire body we have to select a slice we have to select a slice from this slice we need to we need to see what is the signal coming from this slice once we know that what is the signal coming from this slice we need to know what is the signals coming from each stripe now once we know what is the signal coming from each stripe we need to know what is the signal coming from each voxel now this is how the information from all these part we can make a image out of it okay now if this is how a image is now to make this image we need to find what is the stripe made up of to know what is the stripe made up of we need to know what is each each uh, made up of first thing is how do you select a slice as we have discussed earlier we give a gradient so a magnetic field by the mri machine is v0 so we add some magnetic field to it we add some magnetic field to it now also we subtract some magnetic field from it so what we get we get a gradient of magnetic here there is maximum magnetic field here there is minimum magnetic field so there is a varying magnetic field when we go from head end to the leg end head end to cranial to caudal when we go from cranial to caudal there is a varying magnetic tell us when we go from cranial to caudal the frequency that is produced by within the body the hydrogen atom or the magnetic Uh, the, the frequency that is produced by the magnetic uh, magnets that is the proton hydrogen proton the frequency is maximum in the caudal end minimum in the cranial end and it is in the middle when in uh, in the, where there is experience only b0 magnetic field now what happens different areas of the body is having different magnetic field now if you want to measure this part of the body if you want to uh, 
the measure the, the the information from this part of the body what i should do i should give an rf pulse which is having same frequency as that of f0 if i give an rf pulse which is having same frequency as f0 only this much portion of the body's hydrogen photon will flip in 90 degree and we can measure that now what has happened when i give a frequency f0 frequency rf pulse only the the part of the body which is having experiencing f0 frequency will be flipped and we can measure this part of the body now the signal that i i received now is coming only from the this part of the body which is having frequency of f0 okay now this is how we get the particular slice now once we get a particular slice, is that now out of phase the amplitude reduces why the amplitude reduces so we know that so what i do now after doing the frequency encoding and slice selection <coughs> what i did now is that I gave a phase encoding what I did is a phase encoding now what I did now each each stripe each stripe in in this plot in this each row in this plot or each column in this plot is by giving a RF pulse by giving a slice selection gradient and by giving by collecting the the echo by giving a frequency encoding okay that's all is there now what i do i do a second row or second column so what i do now everything remains same except that i deface them little bit okay i deface them little bit now i take the third stripe by defacing them more okay i deface them more but i take the third stripe by defacing them slightly more so this is how I take multiple stripes by giving them different defacing gradient okay different defacing gradient these are all of this I have explained in the phase encoding step okay is I have explained in the previous lectures if you don't understand please go back and see once okay so this will by giving these multiple defacing gradients I do that I repeat the same process by giving different defacing gradient okay so this is how I measure the uh, same slice I take the same slice and I measure it multiple times the number of times I have to measure this the number of times I have to measure this depends on the number of slices that I want okay number of slices that I want along the phase encoding direction so if there is a matrix of phi 2l into phi 2l matrix and what will happen i have to repeat the entire step into 512 times to finally get 512 lines to be filled in the case space okay so that's how we fill the case space and this case space is having only amplitude with respect to time and each line represent each phase uh, encoding step okay there are number of phase encoding step will be same as the number of the pixel that we uh, that we uh, uh, that we want to see okay now if we see in this image we have measured multiple time multiple times the same number of times as the phase encoding step now if i see the if i uh, if i do 1d fourier transformation what i have got is i have got multiple frequencies at each level i have got multiple frequencies and its contribution to the amplitude the same thing is done for each step so what we have done is we have done fourier transformation at each level okay i have done a fourier transformation at each level now i know the the frequency each frequency the the amplitude contributed by the each frequencies okay now what i do i do a fourier transformation in this direction i know that these are the amplitudes contributed by one frequencies by applying different phase gradient okay this is one phase gradient is the second phase gradient third phase gradient so these are the multiple phase gradient steps that we know that okay from right to left are the multiple phase gradient steps so we know that these are the multiple phase gradients 
that are uh, used to measure these steps and also we know that this shows the multiple frequencies and their respective contributions of the the amplitude now what i did the first time what i did was the first time what i did was i did a fourier transformation using all this amplitude with respect to time and found what are the frequencies that are contributing these amplitudes next what i did now i have amplitude and frequency different frequencies now what i did i do a fourier transformation along this direction now i know that there are different phase gradient steps which are giving these amplitudes but the frequency that is giving these amplitude is same so now i can identify what is the difference in the phase gradient that i have applied between the two steps now i know that what is the phase gradient that i have given at each level and i can get an information in which i can get what is the phase gradient that i have given at each step and what is the contribution of uh, what is the contribution of the amplitude after giving the phase gradient now i know that if i give this much if this is the phase gradient that i have applied and if this is the information i am getting now very concentrate well here now see this this is how we we do the 2d fourier transformation in the second dimension now what i get is a, a plot where there is phase gradient at one level the, the there is different phase gradient at one level and there is a different uh, the contribution of the frequencies at each level now what exactly we have to understand is that now see if i give a phase gradient of this much okay now if i give a phase gradient of this much and if i give a second phase gradient of this much you see this is the amount of the change uh, in the in the amplitude that we see this is the amount of the change that we see so if i go in the opposite direction again this is the amount of change that we see so what we have to understand is that as i go as i give greater and greater phase gradient now the amplitude contributed by the different step will be different also we know that each time so number of times you have to repeat this step is decided by the number of phase gradient step that i have to give so that is one thing that is that decides the time number of times we have to repeat one more thing that decides the amount of time that we have to do this step is number of the the time to repeat so once i give an rf pulse with a slice selection gradient i measure an echo with a frequency selection gradient then i give a second rf pulse with a slice selection gradient and then i again measure an echo okay so this again so this is a time to repeat okay this is a time to repeat so this is one step such how many steps is decided by number of phase gradient so that will give the time to uh, time of a scan so number first thing is we need to know how many times i have to repeat this and once i know how many times i have to repeat this i need to know what is the time for each step that is given by tr tr is not exactly each step each step we is nothing but from one rf pulse to the one one more rf pulse so that is the time for the first one now next one starts from next rf pulse so this is what will give us the time for a scan so whatever the raw data that we got is nothing but the time domain data or this is nothing but the data which after fourier transformation we have got uh, the got the image formation we have made an image formation now if we see this first i gave an rf pulse with a slice selection gradient i gave a phase gra gradient i measure a pulse now whatever i measure i plot it here now as we have seen frequency encoding the frequency will be rising first and then falling down because we don't give directly a frequency encoding what we do we give a frequency encoding in opposite direction then i give a frequency encoding in in the in the opposite direction so that whenever i give a free, the frequency encoding whenever i encode uh, any part with the frequency encoding what will happen now they will undergo dephasing they will undergo dephasing and there will be loss of signal to avoid this loss of signal i have given a reverse signal first 
so what will happen now now there is a dephasing happening here now when i give the actual frequency encoding they will all undergo rephasing so the signal will improve and then again it will fall down and that's how we measure the signal now this is what you have to understand that as i go to the middle of the k space the signal is maximum because that's where the maximum the all the the uh, all the uh, protons will be having in sync so there will be maximum signal so that's why if you see from right to left it is always in the middle there is maximum amplitude or oh, is the one thing that we have to understand in a k space if we go from one end to other end it is the center of the k space that is having the maximum amplitude also if you see in this image i have shown that the, if i go from top to bottom again in the center there is maximum amplitude now again this is ex explained this is explained by one more image so what what exactly uh, then this this is the first phase gradient the second third fourth fifth sixth as i come to the middle you see as i come to the middle of the k space the frequency the, the phase encoding is least the phase gradient is least so what will happen we'll have the maximum gradient whenever we give a phase any gradient there is loss of sync so whenever there is loss of sync so there is loss of energy so there is uh, so lot of loss of amplitude so in the g uh, the first phase gradient the phase encoding gradient there was maximum loss of energy so as i go to uh, more and more towards the middle of the k space the the energy loss was less now again as i go towards the periphery now the there is more gradient so there is more loss of energy so what it tells is when i go to the center of the k space along the uh, the phase encoding direction or an, then again there will be maximum amplitude in the center same way in the frequency encoding direction also maximum amplitude in the center so this is how we get an image in which there will be maximum amplitude is in the center but also understand that there is one more interesting so this is what it shown is maximum amplitude in the center minimum in the periphery one more thing that we have to understand is that see in this image now if you see if you compare two points if you come okay i'll give one of okay this image is better if i compare this point with respect to this point see that there is maximum difference in the phase so there is maximum change okay it will show maximum change so the periphery is showing maximum change so as i go towards the middle of the k space see the difference in their uh, in their frequencies uh, is very less difference in their phase is very less now this is because i am giving minimum phase gradient there so what it tells us the the difference between two point the difference between two points is maximum in the periphery of the k space okay difference between two point is maximum in the periphery of the k space so as i go to the center of the k space the difference between two point is less so what will happen if i want to discriminate between two points okay if i want to discriminate between two point we have to use the peripheral part of k space so this is very important principle so what we have to understand by this image is that the center of the k space is having a maximum amplitude the peripheral of the the k space is having maximum phase difference so what will be happening because of this maximum amplitude the contrast in any image is decided by the center of the k space whereas the the two point discrimination or the edge enhancement okay is decided by the peripheral part of the the k space so the periphery of the k space gives us a better resolution whereas the contrast resolution better uh, two point discrimination or the edge resolution is better in the periphery whereas the contrast is better in the center of the k space what we have studied in this okay so, so what we have seen is the periphery gives better the spatial resolution 
central gives better contrast resolution okay now if i if i see this image this is our spine image will look or uh, with a complete case space now imagine if you move the center of the case space we can see the spatial resolution is intact but what has happened there is no contrast when you remove the central post portion there is the same thing if i only keep the central most portion we get only the contrast resolution but the edge definition or the spatial peripheral resolution will the resolution if you remove the center remove the contrast resolution so this is how a case space works now how what what are the ways how we can use a case space for now we can use the case space for accelerating a scan time so what i can do so this is a rectangular field of okay, for example we take only the, we fill only the the middle of the case space we leave the periphery okay we leave the periphery but again we know the periphery is responsible for the, the spatial resolution so what will happen now there is less spatial resolution but a good contrast resolution we get so whenever we want to see contrast resolution we can do that we can remove the peripheral part we can use only the the center of the case space uh, or we can do something called as partial Fourier transformation. Partial Fourier transformation is nothing but we take half, we fill half of the case space and we we will just copy paste the rest half of the case space by using the conjugate symmetry method. So we fill rest of the case space. So this will again, I mean the previous quality will be slightly reduced. So this is how a case space works. A case space is nothing but it is a time amplitude domain or uh, when we measure a uh, image or uh, so this case space is filled by taking multiple uh, uh, by taking multiple echoes with the different phase gradient frequencies and then we are plotting with respect to time and amplitude at each phase gradient and that's how we fill the entire uh, the, the entire case space of time or uh, amplitude domain and by using this time amplitude domain uh, we uh, we measure we, by using this we can reduce the scan time by using this property of the case space so that is about the case space uh, i hope you understood so if you have not understood please go back and see my previous videos uh, on the mri MRI basics and I have explained how to select a slice, how to select a gradient, uh, how to select a frequency gradient, how to select a, a phase encoding gradient. So based on this, I had to explain the case space, but I also tried to include slice selection, phase, uh, uh, the phase gradient and the frequency gradient in this uh, section, but uh, that alone itself they are separate topics so please go back and uh, see those videos either from radio Rye, dot in or uh, or you can contact me i can uh, take classes again if you are interested thank you everyone for the patience listening